Welcome to Community Talk Radio. This is Project Independence, a new talk of the town on LIU Public Radio. I'm your host, Rebecca Miller, along with co-host, show producer, Christina Liu and Otto Los. Um, we just had a great show before. Um, great information, Northwell Military Liaison Services, and um, a lot of information. There's so much information, so much, so many programs and services for veterans on Long Island. I feel like we need like a, a resource guide or like the kinds of things that we have for maybe seniors or, you know, people with disabilities or just something specifically for veterans on Long Island um, with all these programs and services and phone numbers. It's like, it, there's so much out there. And, and like, you know, Otto, you were kind of talking a little bit. It, 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 it's almost a shame if you don't know about it or you find out about it 10 years later. Um, yeah, but, one that uh, doesn't do you any good. Uh, I mean, yeah, you know, no, she's, there's, um, uh, she's really dedicated and you could tell her passion yeah. is there. I mean, she's not just walking through the motions she's into it well and what i want everyone to know what Otto's referring to and rebecca is our first hour of our today's show we interviewed us uh, dr cynthia laraca from northwell veterans um military services and it was such a wonderful interview if you missed it please check um you know north Hempstead tv or visit us on our project independence website or our youtube page for WCWP, you could watch the video, um, you know, the following week, because it really was wonderful information, you know, where in the business, you know, we know about like a lot of organizations, but this was one that I didn't know that much about. So I'm really glad that they were on. And what I like about, you know, their Northwell's military liaison services is that it's really all encompassing, you know, so on top of, you know, providing medical care and, you know, mental care, it's really worried about, you know, what happens when you come out of the service and how you get a job and, and innovative kind of things. And I'm, I'm always fascinated by the 3D printing and prosthetic piece. I mean, it is incredible to me what you can do now. I, I still, I can never wrap my head around how, this printer makes, you know, a prosthetic leg. I mean, it's just so incredible. And it's really one of those moments when you're, you know, technology is exquisite. Um, and it's just, you know, the fact that Northwell is really committed to, um, you know, helping out veterans and, you know, connecting them to services. And I love that the people that they have employed, you know, are people who have been there, um, who are veterans and have served. Um, so it's just uh, really, really amazing. I got a task for you. Find somebody who can talk a little bit about 3D printing from the home level up to a prosthetic Great. level. To mm -hmm. Basically, to educate us and the audience about a technology that probably we don't know much about. And, mm -hmm. you know, how would you use it? You, you, I know that people do use them at home. What mm -hmm. do they do with them? I have no idea. I really don't know. It's I uh, can't even. I'm telling you, it's something for years. I have been, you know, it's obviously, and the fact that you know, I I've known about little home kind of crafty things that you could do. You know, one of my friends actually, um, her husband, they had like a little at home 3D printer, and during COVID, he actually made him and his sons made these little devices that would go on masks because people you know doctors and and whatnot and people who had to wear these masks all day long you know it would get irritating on the ear so it was this little device that you would clip onto it so it would kind of go around your head and it was like a, it felt like a hard plastic but he was donating them to all different you know people at the time who were working whether it was you know any kind of essential worker um and that blew my mind because I couldn't understand how you know you are able to make this thing out of a 3d printer at home I, it, it's still and then but the fact that that was a little thing that you know you could have an entire you know prosthetic leg made from these 3d printers is just I know um, I just I don't get 3d printers I really don't know a lot about 3d printers and I used mm -hmm. to think well do you put like like if you want to make a vase 
out of paper mache and you just like drop paper mache I know I, I, I feel the same way back or like what, I, what I feel you like you open up like a spaceship and you know like a yeah, what is like, it? Something just, like, that's, uh, that's, you throw some wood in I'm and then it, you I'm want saying. a chair yeah. like what happens yeah I, yeah, I, I mean I it. think it would be really great to have a little more information yeah it's yeah. very interesting but you know and it's it's as I mentioned the fact that you know you it can be these fun things you know one year I remember for I had like a MTV music video awards party for my birthday. And, you know, though that award show, you get a little moon man when you win an award. And on Etsy, I found um, a, a company that made me a little moon man from a 3D printer. And then I was like, how is this even possible? And that was just a silly <laughs> little thing. So I agree with you. And I think that it's something that's only going to, um, get more and more advanced as you know the years go on so it's well uh, i mean they it's build like, from what i can gather they even build like some parts of homes and whatnot with 3d printers i uh, think we're like is it is it maybe it's it's thinking of it bigger, as a printer maybe it's not really actually a printer it's it's like some well, other well, kind our, of thing uh, our uh engineer dan cox um, knows a little bit about that, and, and hopefully he could uh, educate us one day. But his sons have, have actually um, done three D printing, so I'm going to Google have... it and see what Professor Google says. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, it's really interesting, but uh, I just think it's really cool. You know, Northwell is a wonderful partner of ours, and you know, this is just another realm um, that it's great to know information about. And you're right, Otto. You know, this show is all about educating, and that's clearly their mission as well. Um, is to I love that that's a big part of what they do is to educate you know caregivers and medical staff of all kinds you know to um, understand veteran needs and I love that Otto what you mentioned too because you know there are a lot of times that you know you don't get asked that question you know have you served you know and that's certainly an important question to ask someone I've um, never ever been asked and, and, and I got out of the service in 1957 so that's a long time mm -hmm. where yeah. I've never been asked. No, and especially when it's probably, you know, there's a lot of people who aren't necessarily going to voice that, you know. So it is so important as, you know, a medical professional to, you know, be the one to open that door and ask that question. So I just think it's really, really um, wonderful. And I certainly want to, you know, um, I, I believe our caseworker, uh, veterans caseworker, Gail, is familiar with them. But just to give a little more information, you know, that's my favorite part of the show is to after, right. you know, I get all the information, sending it out to our staff to really just build our network um, of connections. So, you know, you know that, that, you, you... That, that raises the, the big benefit of Project Independence. All right, Gail, all these things that we've talked about over a period of time are tools that she can recommend to somebody Absolutely. that she has the knowledge about as opposed to us calling up this one, that one, going mm -hmm. to that website, this one, that one, whatever, and taking all kinds of time trying to find out wh where the best fit is for your mm -hmm. situation. Um, Absolutely. It's worth a fortune. Mm -hmm. uh, just going back to being asked if you served, you know, Every, every form I ever fill out every, in any capacity, whether I'm at the DMV, whether I'm at the doctor, whether I'm filling out an application for a credit card, most forms do ask if you're, if you're an, you know, you're a veteran, if you've been in any kind of service, you know, but, you know, I wonder if they actually look at those forms. Like if you go to a new doctor or a specialist and you check off, what actually happens with that yes, if you say yes on that form. I mean, Otto, I'm sure you've seen that on- Well, I mean, when you go to the DMV, you can get a veteran put on your license and you have to bring what they call a DD-214, which is your official discharge paper right. uh, to the DMV. But I'll be honest with you, I don't recall seeing it on too many doctor's questions, uh, if any, I really haven't. Uh, and. Uh, you know, it doesn't mean that it didn't happen. Maybe I just didn't remember. Uh, but right, I, right. It, it I think that that's important. As being, but I, I think that's what Northwell's, you know, point is, is to really get that more of an inclusive 
thing, you know, and, and I just think, you know, we take these things for granted sometimes and don't even think of the logistics, you know, when Dr. LaRocca said, like, it's important how you word things too, because, you know, there's someone who might have been in the reserve that doesn't necessarily consider themselves, you know, a veteran, you know, that's something that we've come across so many times, even within Project Independence, right. you know, so we always say like, whether, you know, you're a call, you know, you're eligible if you're in combat or not in combat, you know, because there's a lot of people who say, well, I wasn't in combat. So, you know, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't count. And that's not true because you actually do qualify for so many different entitlements. So it's so important to educate the terminology um, as well. So it's just, I think it's great. I mean, it's well, really- you're talking, you know, like I was not in combat. I was in the closest thing to that was the Suez crisis. The aircraft carrier I was on was out of outside of Haifa, Israel. But I gave up two years of my life. Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and thank God I didn't have to go to combat. I'm just as happy that that was true. But I think people have to look at the fact that they gave up a period of their life where other people didn't have to do that, you know. Uh, and if they well, didn't. Well, that's exactly you know. the point, though, Otto, and that, you know, there's people who, whether, you know, they were drafted, you know, in the past or are volunteering for service you know, that's still, you don't know, you know, what may or may not happen. You know, I mean, we're living in crazy times, you know, so, you know, it is, you know, of course, it's it's horrible to be, um, you know, in combat. But, you know, the person who's up there, you know, it, they could be in combat any day, you know, so it's, it's still important to know that you qualify. And I also want people to know that so many times spouses qualify for these benefits. You know, that's something also that we in Project Independence, we're trying to educate people. I know our social workers because a lot of times the spouses, you know, their whoever, their husband or wife, you know, who what who served might have passed away, and they don't realize that they actually qualify for a lot of these benefits. Um, so it's just um, it's all about education, and I'm glad that we have our yeah. platform here that we're able to do that. And you I know, feel it's like not Otto... like looking for a handout. You're you're basically looking to get support where you need it, and maybe you need it financially, but maybe mm -hmm. you need it because of the knowledge. Uh, that you don't have, uh, you know, you don't know, you don't have the experience. So you take advantage of uh, an organization like Northwell's military liaison service, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's Otto, not it seems matter. like whether or not you were in combat, it's still a sacrifice. It's yeah, you don't absolutely. know that you're not going to be or you are going to be. And it's a sacrifice for, you know, two years of your life. Um, coming back we talked about you know to not maybe high paying jobs also your family sacrifices while you're gone so there's this is you know if you're a veteran you're you know you're a veteran and i mean mm -hmm. you you take i think the first thing is when you become a vet you know when you become a soldier or you you join a military you're sacrificing right away right off the bat whether or not you're going into combat or not you're sacrificing a minimum of usually two years, your family is sacrificing, um, having to, you know, whatever work or not work or work harder because, you know, maybe the main breadwinner is going away. So there's first and foremost, it's a big sacrifice. So, you know, I don't, and, you know, it shouldn't look at who was in combat, who wasn't, who's more important. Yeah. Um, so I think that's why these services are there for anybody who's made that commitment of sacrifice to themselves and their families so i mean it's just my kind of opinion or yeah, my, my well, at, of, at one point yeah. organizations uh, veteran organizations you know like the legion veteran of foreign wars whatever if you weren't in combat you could not join those organizations and that set the stage for mm -hmm, the right. thinking that you had, like, I couldn't join the American Legion. Now they would like me to join the American Legion. And right. I'm not knocking the organization. You know, it's a good organization. They do a lot of good things. But, you know, time marched on, and all of a sudden yeah. the combat veterans are fewer, so they really need everybody to belong. And it should have been that way in the first place. But, you know, hindsight is, uh, what do they say, uh, you know, 2020. 2020, right. Yeah. Um, um, but I yeah. just want to remind people while we're on this topic that there's still a, like a few more days to donate to the town of North Hempstead. The town board and the town's veteran advisory committee are doing the veterans donation drive. 
Um, it benefits the Northport VA Medical Center's Hero Hunger Help Project. It runs through December 8th. So if you're listening to this, it's December 1st. So you have until December 8th. Um, it's donations of supermarket and pharmacy gift cards will help veterans combat food insecurity. The Northport VA will distribute the gift cards to veterans receiving support services for those who need them. The gift cards that they're looking for are ShopRite, Stop and Shop, CVS, Walgreens. There's a bunch of drop-off locations throughout the town. It's at Town Hall, uh, Clingy Martin Park, Tully Park. And you could also call 516-869-7703 to arrange for a pickup. Um, so it's really just nice. I think, you know, if you happen to be in any of these stores, you know, and, and any amount certainly um, helps. So, uh December 8th, you have to donate. So I like that. And I, I really do. I think these gift card donations are really nice because this way, you know, the veteran is able to get what they need, you know, with the gift card. And I, I always I always like that concept. So it's, it's a nice little thing, to, you know, it's a reminder, um, certainly to give back, especially uh, this time of year. So and I want to Make give sense. people too. The phone number, um, obviously, you could always call 311, but we've been talking, we're kind of recapping the Northwell uh, li veteran, Military Liaison Services, and the phone number you can call is 516-821-5140. Um, she said you could just leave a message if you have any questions or whatnot, so... Um, Great stuff, guys. And on a, another note, um, we are fully in the holiday season. I just got, while sitting here, the um, 2023 Town of North Hempstead holiday celebrations. Uh, so I would just like people to uh, mark your calendar for these fun events. So the first one will be the Christmas tree lighting um, at Mary Jane Davies Green, and that's in Plandom Road in Manhasset. It's right across from... Um, town hall and that is friday december 1st at 4 p.m so if you were listening to this live uh you could go over you know at, at 4 p.m to see the christmas tree lighting it's a really fun family-centered event you know there's all different ages there i believe there's there's probably some kind of cocoa being served i, I know there's a lot that goes on um at this and then the next one will be the hanukkah festival and menorah lighting is sunday december 10th 3 p.m mary jane davies green and the winter holiday celebration, Friday, December 15th. Yes, we can. Community Center at 5 p.m. So mark your calendars. All right. Uh, we actually have to take a quick break. Um, but after the break, Christina Otto and I will continue talking about what's going on in the town of North Hempstead. You're listening to Project Independence and You, Talk of the Town on LIU Public Radio. Take WCWP with you wherever you go with the WCWP app. Listen live 24-7 to all of our streams, all from one app. Plus, call the studios directly from the app and visit our social media. Download the app through the iOS app store on Apple devices or the Google Play store on Android by searching WCWP Radio or visit WCWP.org for links. The WCWP app, available now on iOS and Android devices. Welcome back to Project Independence and You, Talk of the Town on LIU Public Radio. I'm Rebecca Miller, along with Christina Liu and Otto Los, talking about what's going on in the town. I, I, you know, even though it's kind of the quiet season with holidays and vacations, there's still so much happening here in North Hempstead and with Project Independence. Christina, what is going on? I know as I sit here, I'm getting actually emails from communications. So I'm going to open up another hot off the press. Um, in addition, we had mentioned in the previous segment about the veterans donation drive. The town is also doing um, town North Hempstead supervisor, Jennifer DeSena, the town board and the United States Marine Corps are doing the Toys for Tots toy drive. This season is about family traditions and giving. North Hempstead certainly wants to do their part to help the less fortunate. They're collecting new and unwrapped toys for Toys for Tots. They're asking that a new and unwrapped toy is brought in by Saturday, December 9th to any of the locations below, which is Town Hall, Clingy Martin Park over in New Hyde Park, Michael J. Tully Park, and that's also in New Hyde Park. So once again, those are new and unwrapped toys. I'm going to put this on my to-do list. Um, I got and a that's real Saturday story Saturday. on the Toys for Tots thing. When mm -hmm. I was in the service, I spent Christmas and New Year's in Naples, Italy. 
And one of the things that happened was that Santa Claus flew in with a helicopter and we had Italian uh, kids that were orphans and we were each assigned a kid, you know, a child. So I had a a young girl, I guess she was probably about six, um, who was my assignment for the day. And Toys for Tots was actually, I think it existed back then, was who provided all the toys that we were given to give to these children. And it's also Santa Claus had, when a helicopter came in, had toys to uh, give the kids. And I'll tell you, it was one of the highlights of my my time. Uh, You know, those kids really loved every minute of it. And, uh, you know, it's a good program. Yeah, you know, and it's just, and I think it's, it's something because everything else I'm in certainly in a lot of stores. So I will, um, I think it's nice to pick up just a little toy and you, and it really does go a long way because you need to remember there are so many kids out there who are less fortunate and this simple little toy, you know, can really, um, I, I personally like to always find some kind of little arts and crafts, um, little kit. Uh, so I will be doing that this week to get my donation. in. but once again, they're taking donations until Saturday, December 9th at, uh, bunch of different locations so call 311 if you have any uh more questions for that and i know when you think of tots usually you think of like toddler but i'm sure it goes up to ages yeah absolutely and, well, well, right the whole child so range I think it, it's, it's, it's a nice thing to do um in the holiday season so hot off the press just got it in my email and then what i also just got which i think is fun let me open this up it is we're learning this live together guys uh, Councilwoman uh, Marianne Delamonte is presenting Mulch Fest, which is a tree cycling what? event. Friday, December 29th through Monday, January 8th, uh, daily from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, this is really fun. You could bring it to North Hempstead Beach Park in Port Washington or Tully Park in New Hyde Park. Residents can bring their non-artificial Christmas tree with decorations and ornaments removed to the North Hampstead Beach Park or Tully Park to be upcycled and mulched. This tree cycling event will transform Christmas trees into mulch, which will be used to help the soil and plant at local town parks. So I thought that's a really cool um, way. You know, I'm always impressed by the town's creative thinking when it comes to these different eco-friendly green initiatives. There's always something new that they're doing. And I think this is... um, great you know so many of us as someone who has a real tree you know you put it outside and then that's it but this is nice that you can kind of give back and and keep uh, the cycle going so once again that's going to kick off friday december 29th through monday january 8th i understand there's a big shortage of live christmas trees this year is that Uh, true yeah because of the uh, fires up in canada oh Uh, oh, right trees you know kaput and uh, uh that makes sense. I haven't and like I saw trip. on TV there was one fire department that canceled their fundraiser, which was uh selling Christmas trees because they couldn't get enough Christmas oh trees. Gosh. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah. I didn't even think about that, Otto. Well, you know, we'll just have to uh check that out. But if you do get a real tree, you're able to participate um in, in this. So very interesting stuff. Uh, we also, I want to remind people there are still spots available. It is filling up really fast because another thing that's happening while we're on the show is I'm getting so many registrations for our Project Independence Holiday Brunch Party. Um, it's going to be really a great time. It's one of my favorite programs because we kind of have, I love seeing all the people who are registering. There's so many names from like the past that I haven't seen in so long. And I think it's a great time to bring all Project Independence members together, whether you're part of the advisory or the exercise or a senior group or, you know, whatever it might be. It's really nice to bring all those different kind of groups together. So this is the Project Independence Holiday Brunch Party. Um, It's Wednesday, December 13th at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. over at Clinton G. Martin Park. Um, obviously we will have some fun brunch items and there will be an optional grab bag, $10 per gift limit. Uh, registration is required for this. Unfortunately, we do have limited space, um, and it is filling up very fast, but there is a uh, spot still available. So call 311-516-869-6311 to register for that. You know, what would be interesting to me is how many people really are going to participate in the gift thing, um, 
you know, like, frankly, that, we, we've done it in the past, but there weren't that many people doing it. So. But that's why it's optional. So some people, you know, you go. listen, it's, a, it's I also think it's a time of year that there's a lot of expenses. Um, so I always like these optional choices because if people want to participate, they can. And if not, you know, just come and enjoy the holiday brunch party because um, it's, it's going to be, I'm sure, community services and Kimberly does it very big and there's always like a nice spread um, involved. So once again, Wednesday, December 13th at 11 a.m. So make sure you register as soon as possible because it is filling up very fast. Um, I just want to get to my it's other. Just hard to, it's hard to hear you say December and know how close that is. I mean, Friday. I, had a Friday. I really, um, you know, and as we last year, everyone knows I do love a good countdown to Christmas and advent calendars. And it's a very big thing in my um, household. Always has been since I was a little girl. Um, and we keep it going. And it just, as we get older, it just gets more and more extensive. So I will share with you guys, you know, and this is just, and I always think, find your kind of thing that brings you joy during the holiday season. So I do a little advent calendar for my mom and I do one for Jay. Um, so my mom this year, which I'm kind of living out my little girl fantasies. Um, I had, I found this little kind of, it was like a DIY little, like it looks like a little room, like a dollhouse room, but it's small. And I said, it'd be so nice if each day she would open, you know, something and it would be another little, a little miniature that she could put. And then by the end of it, she'll have a cute little Christmas theme baking room. Cause I went with like a kitchen baking theme. Um, let me tell you, this is probably the most expensive advent calendar <laughs> concept I've ever put together. But as you know, a, a grown up that loves miniature items still to this day, um, I, I couldn't help myself. You put anything in mini form, I'm sold on it. Mini Christmas cookies. I mean, the the miniature things that I have found have literally blown my mind. So I'm really excited, though, because it has a little table and chairs. I have like a little tree there and then all kinds of whether it's Christmas cookies or presents or letters. There's all these little tiny baking things because that's something my mom and I like to do um, together in the holiday season. So that's her theme. And then my husband is a little trickier. Um, so this year, what I did, I found we like to collect um, patches and little enamel pins from places we've been um, over the years, uh, you know, because why not? You know, I, it just always grows me. I'm like, let's, let's collect it. You know, I've got I've got just any place we <laughs> why got. Not? Yeah, did you whatever. have a high end dollhouse when you were younger? You know, like <laughs> well, I of course. Yeah. Gosh, that was a tradition. Me and my grandma, you know, back to the dollhouses, me and my grandma lived at there was you know my grandparents grew up in Massapequa and there was these this great um store at the time that is no longer there it was called Frank's and it was like a nursery but it also had um these like this great aisle of like mid dollhouse stuff so I would always go with my grandparents and my mom and and it was such a thing so that's real and I listen I was a Barbie girl you know so all these miniature things and I laugh because now all my little nieces and nephews love me around because I'm like, let's dive into these miniature items you have. Cause they have so many cute things. Now they have all these little tiny, you know, it would be like, a, and it looks like a bag of pretzels. It'll be a little tiny bag of pretzels. It's please don't get me started. I could spend all my time on this. Um, it's expensive. But, so that is, it's, you know, it is expensive. It certainly is expensive, but it's fun. So that's my thing. But for my husband, what I got him. So each day he will open a little, you know, we have our little advent calendar draw. Um, that I ha I made him and it has a little pin from different places and different patches from different places we've traveled together so each day he'll get that so I thought that would be a fun little thing and he could you know he has a little thing in his car that he could just pin uh, the pins to and um, you know I'm, I'm excited so I'm really excited to kick off December 1st to um to do all this and my mom bought me one that is because I love you know the beach and and mom talk and it's a beautiful lighthouse advent calendar. And, you know, that wasn't enough just oh, to open that. She said, beautiful. I needed a present, you know, cause I'm 38 years old, but I needed a present to go, you know, with this calendar. So she got me another one that is you open it and you get a different kind of shell every day. So I'll have like a pretty little shell collection. So yes, you know, we go, we go a little crazy. We start the gift giving prior to actually Christmas. So. <laughs> it's kind of like the countdown to your birthday. 
you know it, it, yeah, we're right. big on countdown <laughs> yes we're very big on countdowns <laughs> i have a question for you because something that i you know i i do get like in a trance sometimes and watch these videos on um what TikTok or what, what not TikTok. I, I'm not even Instagram, Instagram, whatever it is. And I'm like obsessed with watching cooking shows. I just like, mm-hmm. they make whatever the meal is mm-hmm. and it starts out and they do it really quick. Like they chop yep. and they make the thing go really yep. fast. Accelerate. So recently I was watching the mini, the min, the guy who cooks the miniature stuff. He has a oh. tiny little stove oh, yep. the, and the tiny little like egg electric frog. thing, but, and he uses the little spatulas. I mean, they're tiny. He uses all, all those kinds of things to cook, you know, a full meal yeah. and puts it on little plates. I mean, the little <laughs> oils burning and the, I mean, and we're talking tiny. Have you seen this guy? Yeah, I'm, sure I, you have. I have. I'm equally back. I can co-sign on being in a trance um, as well. You know, I've, I've watched and I, I'm sitting there. I'm like, how have I spent this time? But you know, forget when there's little eggs in a bowl and a little whisk going around, forget it. I'm oh, sold. it's so cute. It's so cute. <laughs> so Beck, am really, I hearing really that is. you like to cook? Me? Yeah, you. Or do you I, just I, like to watch the shows? I do. I do like to cook. I really like cooking, though, in the winter. I don't like cooking when it's summer and whatever. And, you know, I really don't eat a lot of dinner anymore just because my kids aren't around. But I do like to cook. I am really good crock pot. Crock pot. Yes, you are I love crock the crock pot. pot. Right. I, I, I do that. I love to roast, you know, food. I, I, you know, I, I do like restaurants too. So, I mean, like I don't put it out there. I love to order in I and do. I love to go to restaurants <laughs> and. Um, so what is your best cook meal that you make? I like Me? Or, uh, um, no, you, yeah. Um, chef back. I make, I mean, there's a couple of things that I make. I want to say my best dish that i am like kind of known for is my jambalaya whenever when fall comes and my friends my family um i make i make a jambalaya um i have i have a great old recipe and i just follow that recipe um i really make great chicken parmesan i when i was younger meatballs um that i got meatballs i make meatballs Um, right that's right. But um, when I was younger, um, you know, my parents were divorced and my mother worked away. So a lot of times I cooked at home for my brothers. And I actually have been known to quadruple dip a chicken cutlet. They would like keep going, you know, with the flour, the bread, the flour, the bread. I mean, these things were like 13 pounds per cutlet. So, um, but I did cook, you know, for my brothers a lot and I, and I can make, I mean, and, and now when I make chicken parm, I don't even bread the chicken parm. I'll just grill mm. them and yep. layer it and do it that way. Mm-hmm. What about you, Christina? You're you're pretty good. You come in with a lot. You of know, my thing is, leftovers. I enjoy it. You know, uh, you know, but I'm also like, I I I can you know my meals come out great. I don't particularly love to do it, um, but my everyone, my whole household always loves when I make. They love my little meatball, and I do baked meatballs. So I'll do like mm-hmm. Greek meatballs baked because I just I love it, mm-hmm. you know. And but my meatloaf, my turkey meatloaf, is a real crowd pleaser. Um, amongst the uh, the household, and it's it's something that I'm always I'm always everyone's always asking, oh, can you just like do that? And it's great because it could feed a lot of people. Um, so we will do that, and it's very tasty. It's really. I'm actually. I think you it, should I, make that for the uh, holiday party for the staff. Right. Or, or when we meatball. go live at the studio, you could bring a little miniature. Sure, you guys, anything. Sure, you. for you guys, you guys got it. <laughs> Um, and it's, it's really easy. It's not exactly that. Com- you know, I'm like a very big, like, I, I don't like to make it too complicated, you know, and especially when I'm working and I get home, literally the last thing in the world I ever want to do is cook. Um, but, you know, you, you, you got to eat. Take out. <laughs> You're re- and that's, you know, and listen, it's me, but it, it really does add up. But then I also realize too, you know, I have this conversation with my husband all the time and I'm sure people listening can relate, especially if you are, you know, not a big family, you know, a lot of seniors are just cooking for themselves or their spouse, you know, it's not these big elaborate things and, and it, but it still can be quite expensive. You know, I mean, when I go to the grocery store, it's a running joke. 
because I literally have no idea how the balance got to where it is. You know, I'll be like, I just have five items. How is it over a hundred dollars? You know, so it really is something. And I remember back like in the past, we we actually had shows and we should do that again, which was like cooking for one or two. Right. Because it was such a thing, you know, so many of our seniors would say, you know, they were used to, you know, cooking these big family meals and it was very hard for them to figure out how to scale back and make that, you know, for just for, you know, one to two people. Right. Well, we were just um, talking we're cooking about for them. That. You, you Didn't know, we have- you, you buy vegetables uh, like steam fresh or whatever they call it. And it's supposed to be for like a big family, but you yeah. don't want to buy vegetables for two people or one yeah. person that yeah. are in a, fr- a freezer bag or whatever. Mm-hmm. It, it's just no, doesn't make I, sense. I get you. Well, I feel you. After break, we have to take a break. Uh, Christina Otto and I will continue talking about what's going on in the town of North Hempstead. And just so you know, you can watch Project Independence in you and talk of the town on North Hempstead TV, channel 18 or 65 on Optimum or channel 46 on Verizon and on North Shore TV. The show is usually air about 2 p.m. You can also visit www mynhtv.com for updates on the schedule and of course on WCWP Studios YouTube channel or on Project Independence and You website. Um, We'll be back after taking a break. WCWP is your home for great music and great conversation. You'll find all that and more on WCWP.org. Listen live on the web. Check out the lineup, subscribe to podcasts, and stay up to date on the latest station events. Get in touch with us and let us know if you like what you're hearing. And find out how you can support or get involved at the only community public radio station serving Nassau's North Shore. Plus, sign up to get a free bumper sticker. It's all online at WCWP.org. Welcome back. This is Project Independence in You, Talk of the Town on LIU Public Radio. I'm your host, Rebecca Miller, along with Christina Liu, radio show producer, and of course, co-host Ada Lose. Um, for a break, we we're just talking about my favorite subject, food. And, um, you know, one of the things that you had brought up, Christina, was about cooking alone. We used to, for cooking for one, and people don't really prepare for one it's so hard Otto like you mentioned it's so hard to build a meal for one person if I really wanted to have chicken parmesan for myself Mm -hmm. I would not I would not cook it I mean and Mm -hmm. I'm not really one that's going to do it for the entire week but I Mm -hmm. do remember too you had mentioned Christina about we had guests on that talked about but we also had um Dr. Dave Gentile who yep. did it um, at the, the Aging segment, in Place right? conference. Uh-huh. I can't remember yeah. which one, but we were like, yes, we can. And he was in the studio and he actually showed how mm-hmm. to prep meals and how, how to eat healthy, for number mm-hmm. one, and also how to eat. If you yeah, and I just, I wrote that down because I definitely think that would be a good um, segment for, you know, 2024. I think it's, it's really um, important because I know I remember it. It's something that comes up so often. And listen, especially... If you're from a family like mine, or if you have a mom like mine who doesn't know how to do anything on a small scale, um, it's very hard that when you're one or two people to, you know, do that. And Otto, I feel you. I, there's nothing I hate more than having to throw out food that has expired or, you know, especially produce that's, you know, gone to waste. I really try and, you know, maximize it. And what's great now about having my little dog is he loves all these healthy things that my um my husband got him into so he loves sweet peppers he loves green beans he loves blueberries uh pumpkin wow. so all yeah, so it's great he's uh, it's my brother laughs cuz he's like your dog is the healthiest eater in the world um <laughs> but and his dog like you know for thanksgiving uh, I'll just give a fun and funny little story so Thanksgiving, we had quite the packed house of all of um, my brother's two dogs, my dog. Um, I don't have a very big house. So, you know, we were we were making do. Um, but it was really nice because it was all these dogs, you know, our family. My husband made these little dog friendly meals um, for the dog. So it had a little sweet potato, a little green beans and boiled turkey. 
Um, so my dog was, and he was elated. My brother's dog, who uh, tends to eat uh, more on the unhealthy side, ate everything but left the green beans and we couldn't bring it was so great it was just like a human like i'm good on these green beans like you know yeah. let's jump to the pumpkin whipped cream you know dessert that we'll be having um, i saw it on facebook the, yeah. the dogs eating i told you, i think my husband should have a business i think it's a great little side business you know he just like whipped it up and i was like i think you can um package this it's really uh it's great so but, meals like, on pack- meals on wheels for dogs he, I mean, for real. And it really was, it was an easy, you know, process. It was very simple. And it certainly, uh, it was nice to, uh, to have our dog go eat healthy, but it's That's great that I have. Topic, other... You're right. Yeah. It would be, you know, like w- the other day I, I do this, I'll mention the name. Like I go Jones beach walk on the way home. I pass this Stu Lennon's and they have a lot of stuff meals mm-hmm. and, uh, but they have a like you can get chopped meat or they have very good hamburgers, all right? Mm-hmm. But there's four in a pack, all right? We're not going to eat four hamburgers. We're going to yeah. eat two hamburgers. Mm-hmm. So the uh, the key is really, I think, to think about organizing and planning. Take two of those and put them in the freezer, mm-hmm. and two that you're going to use. And that's true. With like you can't buy a pack of two small pork chops. You got to buy a big thing of yeah. pork chops. So now what? You know, the, no, I, I think it is, you know, and that's something that, you know, I know Cornell Cooperative, when we've had them on the show, you know, has said so much of things, you know, and not being wasteful and, and eating healthy is really planning. I think, you know, and that's thing I, I've learned for myself, too, is I really try. And listen, things are so expensive. So I want to have as concrete of a plan as possible, you know, and, and I think we've all been to the supermarket when we're starving and which is possibly the worst time to go because then you come home and you said, I don't even know why I bought all these random things, right. you know? So I think it really is important. I don't, as you said, to kind of have a plan and plan out things because, you know, it is, a, you don't want it to be in a situation where things are, are wasteful. And, and I think I became even more aware of that during COVID, you know, when we couldn't have access to certain things and you really had to maximize you know things because you didn't want to go into stores i mean it's like the the ptsd in the back of my head for all this is is serious um so i really try and not be wasteful i hate throwing away you know once you open that bag of you know spinach or lettuce i really try and use it all because if there's nothing worse than saying like okay well you know now it's gone so but i think it'd be a great segment you know cooking for one and two you know and and you know a lot of times it probably is, you know, cooking for the week, you know, or multiple meals, you know, maybe there's a way to repurpose something that you made, but then you could, you know, add it to something else. So I think that is a great segment. I will certainly find someone for 2024 to, um, to do that. See, I love when we just talk and the ideas just flow guys. And um, fr- on the, show. the freezer is your friend too. Yeah. So, you know, um, that's frozen- something I haven't mastered. Um, that's something I really struggle with is the freezing of meats and the defrosting. Beck, I know you're very good at it. Beck's, Beck's a good a good freezer. I, th- I think you're really, you really <laughs> nailed that down. You have. She'd be like, listen, I'm just going to put it in the freezer and then, you know, make her, I, I haven't mastered the whole freezing defrosting um, flow. So It's you really know, good. The, I'm, yeah. Yeah. One, one of the things I see with freezers, uh, first of all, I think you definitely have to date what you're putting in there. But the second one is like if if it's like our freezer, stuff is packed in there, and mm-hmm. you really don't even know what's in the back, you know. Mm-hmm. So, if there were a way uh, of of uh, like a RFID tag on on these things <laughs> to mm-hmm. send you a signal that says this is the oldest one, but it's all the way in the back. Take it out. Well, you know what, Otto? I'm sure that's going to come eventually. I feel like, you know. I actually saw a demonstration of that when I was working 25 years ago, a smart kitchen where mm-hmm. everything in the in the refrigerator was at IBM. Everything mm-hmm. in the refrigerator had a little label that was like an RFID tag mm-hmm. and milk and everything else. And you just had to go past your refrigerator and it would print out actually an order because you preset everything mm-hmm. in terms of how old it was and whatnot. It'll yeah. happen someday. It the will. thing is that the food like has to be identified. Like when barcode right. barcode first came out, it was just a barcode label. It didn't mm-hmm. mean anything. The system behind it didn't exist. 
you know, they had a, a, a ID label, a barcode, but they and then you, they everybody blamed the barcode for the problem. No, it's not the barcode for the problem. It's the problem with the database that the barcode is going to to find out what the price is or whatever it is. It's the database that's wrong, not the barcode. Uh, well, I'm old school, Otto, because baggies now have a little space where you can write down what it is yeah. and the date. So that's that's what I do. Yeah, um, that's good. Because it's mostly it's, you know, I buy, I buy, I have to say most of my vegetables, I buy frozen and I just put mm -hmm. it in the freezer when I get home. Cause mm -hmm. I just, I, it tortures me to throw out, especially yeah. fresh food. So it goes right in there. But like, if I make the other night, I made something for dinner. I made like a beef stir fry and I mm. just, no one else ate it. It was like most yeah. of it was left over. So I put it in a, you know, a container and, um, just sealed it, put it then in another baggie just to keep it nice and, and just wrote on it what it was and when I made it. And yeah, but the, uh, strength, the, the, uh, the vegetable thing, all right, that's not my department normally, all right, I barbecue or whatever. But I know we get these bags, it's like steaming fresh, I think, or whatever. Mm -hmm. You put the bag in the water and, mm -hmm. and it makes, it cooks the vegetable. But mm -hmm. the problem is the bag is big and now you cook this thing because you have to cook it in the bag and then you cut the bag open and now you got a, a week supply of vegetables for two people. Um, how do you, you know, you, well, me, you know, those are the kinds of things you have to plan. You know, if yeah. you're, I, they, I'm sure they make small, I know they make individual bags that are smaller with, with those pre-season things. I also don't like to buy vet frozen vegetables that have yet another plastic bag in them. It's so much, plastic in there yeah. um so i'll just get like you know the florets of the broccoli and if i want to make cheese on it i'll you know i'll do that myself but you know i'll just take a handful of broccoli out of a bag close the bag and then you know i have baggies in my freezer so i recycle the baggie i throw it in there everything's kind of like reusable i guess but yeah um, but that's that makes you know that certainly makes sense and and I know that when we've had and that's such an important topic and I encourage anyone that's listening to this that's interested you know I can't remember when but if you go to our project independence website and type in food storage we had a segment on the show once that really went into proper food storage and you know for safe safety reasons um as well and how long you can expiration dates and it was such an interesting that was a good show it really was I'm gonna actually go back and listen to that I think myself because it really broke down, you know, how to freeze things, how to put things in the fridge, where to put things in the fridge. I mean, there's so many different things to really optimize, you know, and certainly and keep you safe. So um, I, I encourage people to check out that because I, I definitely think that's an important topic. And, and I do. And I think it's a, a relatable topic because especially if you are, you know, <clears throat> look at Beck's side. Her sons aren't always in the house. So, it, you know, she's going to have a lot of love. She's not going to eat the same amount. So, you know, she needs to, you know, freeze that. And I think that she's certainly mastered it. You know, I know Beck's always like, you know what? I'm just going to freeze it. So it's, it's impressive. I'm impressed. Well, I thank I you say. so much. I had no idea how I, impressed you are with my freezing it, ability. Because it's something that I can't really <laughs> nail down. You know, and my grandparents were so And My grandma, my dad's mom, um, you know, was the queen of freezing meats. You know, everything was, you know, it was wrapped in tinfoil with the label of the day. You know, it was like a whole process. And she really, you know, nailed down like the defrosting thing. You know, <laughs> Because another thing during COVID, I remember I couldn't like nail down the correct timing of, you know, and then I was always scared, like, oh my God, am I, is it defrosting too long? And it's going to create some kind of bacteria. Yeah. So that was my own personal struggles. You know, um, some, and now of that, some of that stuff is like inherited almost. All right. Yes. My father and my mother were both organized. My mother was a mm -hmm. great cook. My mm -hmm. father did a lot of things around the house and he had all kinds of tools and stuff, but he always preached to me, he says, if you take something out from somewhere, put it back there, and you will find it when you need it. And it, it, it it's stuck just, in it's my just, head. It's not you know? simple, but it's a great rule of thumb. Yeah, really I, mean, I mean, it's been with me forever. You know, if I if I use this pen, I'm going to put it back where it goes in the first place, because yeah. then I'm not going to be spending five minutes looking for the pen. 
Yeah, well, clearly you don't live in my house because the amount of phone calls I get from my mom and my dad say, oh, my God, I don't know where I put this. Where is this? I'm like, if you just put it back where you found it, we'd be OK. A little bizarro thing that also with my freezer, which I can't believe I'm sharing with you, a little tidbit, though. I also like to freeze my desserts, like even fresh cookies, and then eat them cold because you know why? It actually makes it last longer. If you have to chew that's, a little bit longer, but you get a nice fresh actual, cookie in there. Yeah, a candy bar. You know, love, a piece I love of cake. A frozen candy bar. But How they about actually a frozen say that. Milky Way or. Yep, a frozen Snickers. Boy, yeah. anything. Slice it up. A, a nice layered chocolate cake with lots of frosting in between. You freeze a slice and you just eat. It's just, uh, it's magical, really. Kind now, of, what do you pack oh. that in? In a plastic oh, baggie? Yeah. yeah. Whatever, whatever, um, you know, maybe may, what it came in originally, I'll slice up a few, maybe I'll wrap it in saran wrap or whatever I, whatever I have um, available that's in the fridge, I'll use first or mm -hmm. I'll just, you know, get a fresh piece of saran wrap. Okay. Well, clearly I like my dessert. will know that we're starving. I know, um, I'm so know, hungry. I'm like, what time is it? <laughs> <laughs> once it's we start veering time. off, you know, talking about cake, frozen cake, I mean, really, you're just talking my language now. I'm just completely famished but <laughs> i clearly i think this is a great topic and i will certainly um find someone to give us a chat about it because it's it's really um important uh, i want to i know we are rapidly approaching the end of the show next week we are going to have on greg belbara who is the owner certified senior advisor from right at home nassau suffolk he's coming on to talk about sensi which is 24 7 ai virtual care it's something that is a new technology that's being used for people um, who are aging in place. So I'm, I'm really intrigued by this. Um, that's another topic. You know, food and AI is really um, where our brain goes. And now 3D printing, apparently. And 3D printing. So, Did they really does 3D it... printing cook, too? I'm just curious. Yeah, 3D uh, that will have some a dance. Can it will be up a meal? I need um, a meal. Hey, now, you that's two an... are good at cooking. I got a question for you. I like garlic, all right? And I, recently I discovered I can buy garlic. Bunny can't handle garlic. so I can't either. We, I'm with Bunny. Well, we don't get a lot of garlic. so but I can't I saw, have enough. Well, I get this peeled garlic now in a, in mm -hmm. a cup. All right. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes. How long could I use that stuff? How long before you can't really use that garlic? Uh, you can put that. It's a pet. You know, you can put that yeah. in the fridge, too. Once you I, just make sure, fridge, yeah. make sure it's sealed. Otherwise, your yeah. entire refrigerator, once you've opened that, yeah. it's going to, yeah, just make sure it's sealed. And it's just like any other vegetable, any other kind of thing. I Do you ever get it already minced in the glass jar? And then you can I seal that up nice. Uh, but I think I like the little, like, I like to take the little chunk and cut it up a yeah, little bit. Yeah, sure. And put it in a frying You can also pan smash it with oil. a knife, too. Yes. Which lasts, yes. it takes about a minute or two yeah. and it's mm -hmm. sauteed nicely. Oh, yeah. And I yeah, that's what that I do for my husband with my vegetables. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, some use... vegetables are like eating cardboard, to be honest about it. <laughs> yeah. Garlic's the best. Garlic and yeah, olive oil. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Makes it good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so these are just I'm starving. I, I actually have one of those cute little garlic containers. It looks like a little clove of garlic, and that's what I keep the garlic in in my fridge. So that's how that's how I do it. You know, that's how Another you fly. Thing, but I need to get this. I need to get this thing that looks like garlic to put in here. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Um, next week, once again, I mentioned the Sensi twenty four seven AI care. The following week, we are going to have on Cornell Cooperative. They're going to be talking about healthy holiday eating. Um, which is thing that we're going to need a reminder of. Certainly, where we're veering off to all the cakes that we want to eat right now. <laughs> then the following week, we're going to have on a doctor from Northwell Health, which is they're going to be talking about all about allergies. Um, and if you miss anything, once again, you can check out Project Independence website or WCWP YouTube page or watch us on North Hempstead TV. Well, you know, thanks for listening to Project Independence and You Talk of the Town. Of course, I'd love to thank Christina for another great show that pulls us all together. And of course, Otto, the best co-host there is out there. Great show, you two. Project Independence and You is a production of Long Island University Public Radio. Dan Cox, of course, is our engineer. 
Join us again next Friday at 10 a.m. on LIU Public Radio. Goodbye, all. Goodbye.